Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if like me you were alive in the 1990s then you or your family probably had a PlayStation tucked away under the TV unit in the living room. 25 years later and I still do, though because of the advancement in television technology most PS1 games look even more aged than ever in 2020. 240p on a 50 inch 4K display doesn't hold up brilliantly to say the least, but as a PlayStation enthusiast, I'm still willing to sacrifice um, my eyes for a top notch retro gaming experience. But it doesn't have to be this way. Sure, for the full on 90s nostalgia hit, this is the way to do it, but if you prefer to sit a little further back from your big Ultra HD screen with a wireless controller in hand, emulation might be the way to go. It's a grey area. Enthusiasts like myself will always prefer the traditional by the book way, and by that I mean playing games on the consoles that they were designed for, but today we're exploring the full potential of some classics and running what's left of my PS1 collection at 3840 by 2160 resolution on PC. So calibrate your CRT, put on your favourite Nirvana album and get ready to relive the 90s and early 2000s in a crispier way than ever before. So the resolution and frame rate of PS1 games varied depending on your region, with NTSC regions getting the better end of the deal with 30 and 60 FPS as opposed to PAL regions with 25 and 50 FPS. Games would run anywhere between 256 by 224 to 640 by 240 progressive or 256 by 448 to 640 by 480 interlaced. Our first game was also available on the PlayStation 2 in much better form, might I add. This is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. THPS 1 or THPS 2 may have seemed like the ones to show off, but this one is more interesting from a technical standpoint. On the PS2, it was the first game released supporting online play, and it's one of the best rated games alongside GTA 3 for the console. The PS1 version, however, still used the THPS2 engine thanks to technical limitations and featured slightly different level design in order to make it run smoother. The whole thing is less interactive, but Shabba Games, the team who ported the game to the PlayStation 1, did a fantastic job and it was very well received, just like the PlayStation 2 version. Not quite so, but it still received rave reviews. Here's how it looks in 4K using a Ryzen 5 1600, an AMD 5700 XT and 16 gigs of RAM as well as EPSXE to run this on PC. You may be better off with the PS2 version in terms of better gameplay and features, but visually this higher resolution makes a world of improvement. The popping and short draw distances are more noticeable and that was always the case anyway, due to trying to cram bigger levels onto this at the time of the PS2 last gen console. Performance wise, the games were capped at their respective frame rates, and this resolution enhancement still meant no drops across the board. Any games that ran at 30 FPS previously still did so, and any that ran at 60 FPS still did so as well. I apologise if the aspect ratio looks a little off, I had to run the games at slightly less than 4K in windowed mode to get internal recording to work. I've captured everything with AMD Relive software. Next up, we have FIFA Road to World Cup 98, an absolute classic. Classed as abandoned wear on PC, this 90s football game had it all. A brilliant soundtrack, excellent graphics with unique faces for every player, a host of top quality teams, and even a feature that let you slide tackle the goalkeeper. It was an instant red card, but my goodness was it funny. It's one of the best sports games ever to come out and is well deserving of a 4K overhaul in today's video. I took on Mexico in this footage and although I lost to them in 240p, I won in 2160p. Maybe thanks to the sharper visuals and the ball actually looking like a ball. I think this is why it was made a little oversized in the first place to combat the low res and once you've enhanced the resolution it looks even sillier. But what a couple of fantastic goals, if I do say so myself. 
Colin McRae Rally 2.0, not to be confused with Dirt Rally 2.0 of course, was released in the middle of the year 2000. If you so much as dared stick this game on expert difficulty, you would have been in for a disappointing string of losses. Also releasing on PC in Game Boy Advance, this title was very well received all round, and a 4K overhaul means that everything looks more on par with the superior PC version. Not that anyone in 2000 would have been running this title at 4K anyway. The jagged edges are eliminated, the car details are more recognisable, and the environments look a little nicer. Instead of one long tree texture, we now have individual trees coating the landscapes. Now, despite its cartoony graphics, 1998's Spyro actually had very nice visuals. Great draw distances combined with the lack of fog, a common technique used back in the PS1 days, made this a very nice looking game and of course it has since received an official remaster, as is the current trend for a few classics. If like me though you still have a PS1 copy lying around and the knowledge to get these games working on PC, then it's certainly worth another playthrough in 4K. There's no need to go overboard with anti-aliasing either in any of today's games because the higher resolution will eliminate most of the nasty jagged edges, and it means the frame rate remains stable. I've heard that some people have experienced sound issues in this game, but honestly everything seemed to be running at full speed. So I'd say that the game that benefited least from a 4K resolution bump was Ace Combat 2. It's a great game, it really is, but because you spend your time in the air with ground details not being very important, the switch to 2160p highlights the lacking environmental details a little more. What you see here is still the OG footage, but as we switch to the sharper footage, you'll notice that while the plane details are clearer, everything else doesn't really change. It doesn't matter, to be honest, because the primary focus is flying around wiping out enemies, and as far as fun goes, this has heaps of it, but it doesn't benefit visually as much as the other titles. What a great game though, and one that still holds up today as far as gameplay is concerned. Okay, so we have to mention Driver. My last video was about Driver 3, and this time we're talking about the original. Released in 1999, this movie car chase inspired title was certainly pretty thrilling and featured some great playable locations. I won't mention them all because, you know, spoiler alert. I'm driving around San Francisco here which is very built up and detailed for a 1999 release. When we switch to 4K, all the details really stand out though. The names of buildings become easily readable, pedestrians sitting on the paths at tables have a proper face all of a sudden, and this 20 year old version of a bustling modern landscape suddenly feels more alive than ever. This is complemented by the realistic damage detail. Cars will start billowing smoke from under the bonnets when crashed enough times, and your pride and joy will gradually become a pile of crumpled steel cruising along the city's busy streets. Again, the pop-in is unavoidable, but this was an ambitious title back in the day, and it's nowhere near as bad as the Tony Hawk PS1 series in terms of assets suddenly appearing. Control-wise, Duke Nukem plays similarly to Tomb Raider, a little better actually. Tomb Raider is missing from this video and honestly, control-wise it has aged horribly, but this feels a little more responsive. This is the last of my PS1 games I've looked at today, and these titles are the only ones I have left in my collection. Playing them on the original console feels more special, that's for sure, but upscaling everything for a bigger display certainly is worth trying out, as the visual difference it seems to make in some games really is significant. Primarily, it seems to be the elimination of the jagged edges that makes the biggest difference, and doing this is a great way to breathe some new life into your old games collection. If said games aren't available on PC, or on newer gen consoles as remasters. Sometimes though you really can't beat playing through the original and I'd highly recommend that you try it out should you want to do so. There are hundreds of games available for old school consoles and a lot of emulators on PC available too and I just know that a lot of you out there still have your old games collections so it may be worth firing them up one more time in Ultra HD or even 1080p. 
As far as this one goes, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know what your favourite PS1 games were down in the comments below. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one. Well, that's left the manager with a tricky reshaping problem.